So in this episode, we're finally going to start putting this thing back together. So I've got a cab I'm going to show you, and we're going to do a little work on the cab, and then we're going to pop that cab on here, and hopefully that will be the main section of this video. And then we'll have it pretty well started and slap a few other things on, and, you know, I don't know. Pretty soon, before too long, maybe we'll need some wheel tires for this thing. I don't know. Let's get into it. Well, I found a cab. Uh, it's just got a few issues there that are very, very easy to address. The actual outside of the rockers are in tremendous shape. Floors are easy to address. I mean, overall, <clears throat> there is one little dent here, uh, but that can be taken out from the inside there and patched up. Overall, it is in very, very good shape, especially when you compare it to our other one. Uh, I did pick up this door. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to use it or not, but it is in a little better shape overall than what we're working with. So this is what we've got. Uh, also got a Hydro Boost unit, and the portion of the unit that I really want is this here because this is the expensive part. The master cylinder part, you know, you can buy them relatively easily, but this is the hard part, well, the expensive part to get. A little bit of uh, patching there it needs. Um, there's, that's very, very minimal and easy to patch, especially because I'm going to have the cab out, so that doesn't worry me at all. Overall, the cab is in tremendous shape. Uh, we are going to have to put in the windshield, but that's fine because I think the windshield out of the out of the yellow one is in perfect shape, so that should not be a problem. It already has a back window, and it has a cargo light, and I did manage to snag one of those along with some other little goodies. Um, I may or may not use. There's an extra transmission hump sitting in there, which is ironically yellow. A, this is an 85 cab. So, uh, take a look at the roof here. The roof and along the top of the windshield and everything is really, really, really good. And along the back, sometimes then they sometimes they rust out at these seams. Again, really good. But I'm going to be stripping this cab down and reworking it. I think we're going to mostly do this the right way. Oh, well, we're going to try to do it mostly the right way. This is a nice, excellent starting point. All right, we got to strip the new cab down. I want to get all this stuff on it because I want to start from a clean base. Obviously, we have to patch up a few things, but the goal here at this stage is to get the complete underside cleaned and ready because I can't access that later easily. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to lift it onto the truck chassis. We're going to be using this transmission hump here. And I believe that's, that's going to take out this low spot anyway, which is essentially what they did. But I may have to do some of that after it's in the truck. This floor obviously needs patched. Next up is that floor. Well, since this is a low budget project, I'm not buying any steel specifically for this. And I have my scrap pile, which is basically my entire yard these days. Anyway. I have these old Jeep doors, which, if you've watched anything previous on the channel, came off of our 96 Jeep Cherokee, and, well, I tried to sell them, because they're not in bad shape, but nobody wants to buy them, so they're going to donate some sheet metal, because they're in the junk pile anyway, so I'll have to flatten it out a little bit, that's fine. I'm just going to take out a big chunk, and it'll be about the right gauge, and I think that'll work, so... Let's take out as much of that as we can and repurpose some of this scrapyard bound metal.
Uh, I was going to wait on these, but since I got all my gear out, you know, and it's here, I might as well do it. I didn't cut out enough rust there, and I was just fighting pinholes and everything, and this metal's so thin to begin with, and, well, it was annoying, but I'm going to try not to do that again. I may cut this back a little further than what I had planned on, so my welds don't look quite like bubble gum because I'm chasing them every which way and building up too much weld, and, well, never mind, that's just excuses. Anyway, I'm going to see what I can do about some more of these. I think I got this piece pretty good. I'm gonna kind of tap it into position and pull it up and fold it as necessary to get it close here. And as I get to this end, I'm gonna, you know, tap it down into position and make sure these relief cuts align. But I think this should be pretty good. Uh, not a lot of gap there. There's a little bit of a a little bit there that's gonna need pulled up. I think we got a pretty good start here. We'll just work from this end and snick it on that way. So let's proceed with that. Yeah, I think that'll do it. Let's put a primer on it so we can see all of our imperfections all at one time. This is a high build primer, so, you know, we'll put it on nice and thick so that it fails immediately. I'm gonna wait for that to dry a little bit before I start cutting here and throwing stuff into that drying primer. We'll at least let it dry on the surface. So over here, well, this is a little bit more intricate because we got all these shapes. So this piece here that goes down here is separate. You can kind of see where the, the cab floor section joins this front pillar section. And hey, sometimes rust out there. The water rolls down in here. You let your door open or if your door seals start leaking and it just all the water goes right down in there and rusts it out that's probably what we had here anyway so we're going to patch this piece first and then like we did over here you know we're going to put this rolled piece on top of it but as a part of this piece we also have to patch back along this corner so i don't know how well you can see it but it's rusted out in here got to chip all this stuff out of here so that i can see what i've been doing and then zip this off and form up a piece for this So I used my engineering skills this time, and I think I came up with a better way of doing this since I have the loader. And my careful measurements, this just barely fits in this bucket. So that'll support this end, and then I ran straps over and connected them to my points on the other side. And that should keep it wedged into the loader. And that way, we should be able to tilt it down onto the frame, and the frame is sitting tilted 
because uh, the one tire is flat. So it'll help us adjust it. I don't know. Uh, let's see if this works or if it fails catastrophically and destroys my new cab. We got her roughly in position. What I'm gonna do now is get up my floor jack and kind of do a little bit of lowering here and there. I can't get finesse with the loader because you know it's locked in. Once I drive up and lower it, it's locked in. I can't just shift the whole loader side to side like you could the side shift on a forklift. That would be a nice feature to have. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm starting to get remotivated now. This is good. All right. I'm just gonna raise the back of this cab up, lower this down, get the mounts lined up, and then kind of do the same thing in the front, roughly. Hopefully without killing myself. Well, she's on. I did have to bend just a little bit around there, and I may have to expand this a little bit up at the front. So I'm just cruising along on this cab. Uh, I finished cutting out the hump around the transmission, and I did modify my transmission hump cover. Uh, I had to raise it a little bit up here because as you can see, it's really tight with the bell housing. So I'm moving along to, you know, some little details here, like this radio plate. Last person decided to take their grinder and just cut out for a newer radio. And well, guys, don't, don't do that. Just, just don't stop it. I don't know what I'm going to do here. Looks like they modified it for a 70s dash, moved the light down here and I don't know. I feel like I might have to weld this up and re whatever it because I think this hole is too big but for the wiper switch the 70s wiper switch anyway the steering column I have I it's the earlier steering column that came out of this truck originally and I think we're probably gonna stick with that so wiper switch is gonna be in the dash so probably what I'm gonna do is weld this hole up again and find I don't know. I, I gotta find how big that hole is and what it looks like. The old dash is messed up a little bit too, or I would just cut it out of there and weld it in, but I don't know. We'll take a look at it. I gotta get this welded up, get some other things taken care of. Going along with this patching here. Um, again, stop looking at my floor welds. Just, just stop. They're awful. They're gonna be covered by seam sealer. It's fine. They're structurally sound. So now that it's on the chassis, I can address this down, it's surprisingly solid, doesn't even want to bend. You know, I'll cut this out here and weld in a piece and probably fab up a new-ish cab corner for that. And around here, probably roughly the same thing. Got to patch this hole here. And then that's probably all we're doing for patching. I think we'll be okay here. Because this will be covered by a seal and it'll be fine. Seal. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention up here. This is often a spot that rusts out. And then you'll have water drip down here and you go, where's that water coming from? Well, it's because the drain for the cowl comes down here. And it comes out this hole right here. So all your water runs right down there and down there. And if your drain gets plugged up or whatever, and you get junk sitting down there, there's a little bit of a ledge kind of where the pieces meet. And if you get junk stuck in there, it'll hold water. And then it'll rust out. And I think I'm just going to stick seam sealer in there. I think I'm going to give that whole area coat a seam sealer to kind of waterproof it anyway. So there's no point really replacing the metal because it's going to be sealed up good when I'm done with it. Of course, I can, with all this taken apart, 
I can reach in here good and access it to cover that up with seam sealer. I've already put rust converter on it, so it's sitting there at the moment. Probably going to seam seal everything all at once on this thing. Then I'm going to have to, well, I'm not going to have to, but I'm going to come in here and clean up and seam seal the cowl. Um, make sure that will stay watertight for the future. Oh, and obviously the little things, like I'm going to take this clip off and probably zip off these trim nuts because I'm not going to be putting trim on here. All right. Enough talking on with me with the welding and everything, so no one wants to see that, so I'll weld and grind and sand and all that, and then come back when we're done. Well, <clears throat> I got this piece in. Um, obviously, it doesn't look perfect, but the plastic bezel covers, well, pretty much all of that section anyway. Uh, you know, when I get some paint and sanding and primer and everything on there it'll be fine <sighs> good enough for government work so that leaves this piece over here yeah i think i'm gonna have to weld in a flat piece maybe cut that out a little better somebody just went hog wild on that stop it people just stop it all right, so I just completely filled that in for now. I don't have the wiper switch yet. I don't know what I have. I think I have a broken one, but I'm not going to worry about that because I can easy cut that out later by, you know, drilling four holes and then zipping it out quick with an angle grinder. So not going to worry about that. Well, that's assuming the shape is square. I, I don't remember. Got to sand that, prime that. Um, Yeah. Uh, we're, we're moving along here. It's a new day. What are we doing besides regretting ever taking on this mammoth of a project? I uh, got to thinking about this, and I, I, I was kind of shocked when I got to think about it, because I have done all this body work so far with zero body filler, or filler of any kind other than welder. And I know it looks a little dirty. I've got some splatter from rust converter and whatnot on there but we're looking surprisingly good when these sand down uh even though of course <laughs> they're all going to be hidden under plastic and everything and you'll never see them anyway except you might well no because the edge of the plastic goes around here it'll actually look surprisingly good so and here this isn't i haven't even sanded this yet and once the seal is on and everything, I still haven't trimmed that down, but yeah, I think we gotta, don't, don't look at my welds again on that cover. I, I did that in a hurry, but I think I'm gonna get to fasten this hump down and uh, take out whatever little tiny reshaping we need to do, which basically is going to involve that hammer right there. And I'm... I need to go around the windshield with a wire brush real good and clean out this adhesive. And then I need to make sure, once I have that cleaned up, I need to make sure that this is going to seal okay on our new rubber seal. A lot of the times down here at the corners, right up along the top, that's where it'll rust out. The top looks fantastic and the pillars look good. This down here worries me a little bit, but I think what I'm gonna do, I think it'll be okay once I clean it up if I seam seal it and that'll hold for 15-20 years which is all you can expect to get out of one of these bodies anyway unless you're absolutely going to baby it which I sincerely doubt this is ever going to be babied but you never know. Alright well there's an eclipse today so the light is very strange out but it hasn't hit us yet. Anyway I'm trying to fab up this cab corner piece number one. I'm gonna have to do this in a couple sections and this is I'm just trying to match it up. I'm probably just gonna cut out here put something in there. I don't know. I've got this cab corner pretty close to fabbed up uh, in place. Obviously there's lots of grinding and sanding to be done. 
Uh, maybe have to massage it a little bit, but not too bad. I'm gonna have to make another pass along there to fill in pinholes, I'm sure, once I grind it down the first time. Then we can worry about the rocker. You know, we're going for close, not perfect. Uh, this isn't a, you know, fine pebble beach restoration or anything, so I'm gonna keep cruising along with that. All right, this should be enough. I'm gonna start up here and then hopefully keep from warping it and pull these together as I go down. They do match up if I tweak them a little bit, but I'm gonna try to keep from warping it as I go with the welder. And then over here, we'll have a seam like the factory had. The way they do this is they spot weld these on the back and then they fill it with seam sealer and then paint over it. So you can see here as the seam sealer starts to age and crack, you can see it. All right, I got this metal roughed in. Yeah, again, don't criticize my welds because they're gonna be ground down and nobody's gonna see them. Still got some filling and things to do back here on the cab corner, but anywho, figured I'd get all that metal roughed in. Anyway, I gotta grind these down and then we'll take a look at everything. All right, that's as good as we're doing for now. I'm running out of steam welding. <laughs> anyway, we got, what do we got left for welding? I think just the other side yet. All right, we're moving over to this side. I probably should have cut out a little bit more rust. This metal, I don't know. It's just the part that hangs down. That doesn't worry me so much. It might not look right, hurt my professional pride, but it'll be fine. Anyway, we gotta wrap a little bit around the corner there. All right, I think I got that corner buttoned up, except for, well, maybe going a bit heavy on the primer since it's dripping. <laughs> That's okay. There was a screw back here that somebody ran through the cab for a speaker wire. I plug welded that. There's a hole down there, I plug welded. Next step is going to be pretty much sanding and sanding and sanding and well, a little bit more sanding. All right, where are we at? I didn't film everything because even in time lapse, uh, you know, like I spent hours and hours and hours just sanding and prepping and I have old spray paint sitting around and I decided to put on a preliminary coat because I ran out of primer and I'm gonna sand that down, you know, poor man's primer. I'm just putting a skim coat on like the cab corners and stuff, the section here, just wanted to smooth out um i put rust converter on it and everything but it was a little rust bubbly even after i scaled it that's fine it's it's solid underneath i just want it to look halfway decent so there's a little bit of sanding there to do you can kind of see where the old paint here because there's like a logo or this is where the trim would have been you can kind of see the edges like they painted they must have done a respray or something and they painted up to the edge of the trim and stopped and you can see where it goes along the edge of the chrome strip up here too, which I was trying to sand out. I'm less concerned about that because the chrome strips are going back on here. I don't want it visible. I didn't, I don't have the money to buy a tent, but I had this old tent frame, put a tarp on. That'll be fine for now to keep junk off of our paint when we paint. Yeah, I know this is the, this is the poor man's way of doing it, but this is how I'm doing it right now. So far it's working pretty good. Over here, this is turning out pretty good. Uh, again, gotta sand that, but when that's all said and done, that won't be highly visible. It's a little bit here. Again, they did a they did a respray, and you can kind of see here the old paint. I did a little bit of smoothing here. I'm gonna sand that out. A little bit of smoothing over this dent, the remaining that I couldn't take out. I gotta sand that. Of course, down here at the cab corner where I put a skim coat on it. Uh, painted here. I wanted to see how visible this was going to be. I need a little bit of sanding there, but it's not going to be that tremendously visible. Started adding seam sealer around the transmission hump and 
round up in there and around this area here that I patched and of course up inside I seam sealed cleaned and seam sealed all along the cowl uh, it, it was pretty good for most of, except for that one section that r had rusted out and I patched the rest even though but I seam sealed over top of the old seam sealer because it, it does crack after you know 30 40 years sometimes so this is the kind of seam sealer that you can paint over so when that's completely dry which usually takes a couple days to dry it's still a little bit flexible so by the time we paint it it will be fully set so we're just cruising along here so i'm gonna go back to sanding sanding and more sanding and uh, it's probably incredibly boring to watch but i will take a little bit of time lapse of it just uh so you can see i'm not cheating or anything Well, after much, 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 much sanding, I think we might finally be ready to give this thing a coat of paint. I cleaned and sanded the inside. I just did a light sanding on the inside because you don't need to be too aggressive. You just need to get the surface, you know, scored up a little bit so it grips to the paint and, uh, clean the floors out there so I think when I do this I'm gonna, I'm gonna spray the inside first that'll let me get my gun settings right and everything I'll start on the floor and I won't waste any paint as I'm getting my set up and then when I finally get it right then we'll start moving to the outside paint flavor of the day is farm implement paint and we're doing that because well I'm poor and this stuff is $75 a tractor supply and it's yellow and it's you know it's fairly resistant paint good thing about this is John Deere yellow was available pretty much anywhere and you know you can get touch-up spray cans if you need to very easily from pretty much anywhere so uh, this stuff you thin with mineral spirits well, I have wiped and wiped and wiped until my cloth came up clean. So I think we are ready to lay down a coat of paint on this thing once the remaining moisture dries from my damp cloth. <sighs> okay, here goes nothing. Well, there she is in the cold light of morning. It's got some imperfections, and I think I'm going to need another coat. Uh, there's some areas that will be hidden in the end that I could have gone heavier down there where the bed's going to cover, but it hurts my professional pride. And there's some imperfections along the side. I'm not sure what happened. There's a few runs and things. I'm going to have to sand it out and lightly sand and then reshoot it that's fine i don't have the doors on yet and i'm gonna have to spray the doors so that area is going to probably get a respray no matter what uh the rocker where i patched you can't really see anything hardly uh, again paint imperfections but for what it is i don't particularly care that much um I don't know if I'm going to do an attempt at buffing this out and giving it some shine or not. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what the, what the future, what the end holds. Um, if I'm going to buff it, I'm going to do it when the body work is complete. But for right now, the main goal of this is it's one color. First coat is down. Everything's sealed up. And we can move forward with the next stage of 
bodywork, which is going to be the doors and the windshield and sealing this cab up. And then we can go back and clean up the outside a little bit for maybe a, another coat. Overall, it's, it's not too bad for what it is overall. Yeah, I mean, I think it'll work for our purposes. So, yeah. I know this video has probably been incredibly boring with all the time lapse that is probably going to be in it with all me just sanding and grinding and welding and painting and doing all that stuff, but maybe the next videos will be a little bit more exciting when we start to move on to the doors and actually start to put some parts back on this thing and I'll show a little bit how the windshield's going to go on if you've never done that before and go into that maybe in some detail. I don't know yet. We'll see. Anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, that's going to be it for the main part of this cab body work other than the final, you know, touch up and cleaning and, you know, top coat and all that stuff. Uh, the radio plate I welded in is going to be pretty good. Uh, the plastic bezel is going to come around here, so you won't even be able to see where I weld my welds and grind marks there. Um, I could probably use a little bit of a spray there, more spray, but again, we'll get to that before we start putting parts on. Well, we got the cab on, and that was the main goal of this video here. I kind of had to push this forward and get the cab on because I didn't want to have bare metal and stuff out here in the weather rusting uh, before we can move on to the doors and everything. So we got that coat on, and <clears throat> yeah, next, uh, Next chance I have available, I'm going to probably finish up this paint job, but, you know, again, that's not going to be anything that's not going to be incredibly boring. I don't even know if I'll show it on camera, because, again, it's just spray and everything, but it will show you the end result, I promise. So, I'm sure this video is getting long with all the time lapses and everything, so I think I'm going to cut it off here. Next time, we're going to move on to the doors and the windshield, and hopefully getting this cab sealed up a little bit. Uh, out of the weather so I can move on to the inside and get some of the fixtures back in the inside And after that maybe we'll move on to the front clip. I still don't know what we're gonna do with that We might salvage the old panels. We might buy new ones. I don't know I'm sure this wind is going to be annoying on camera, but again, I just have this cheap GoPro, so I apologize for that and Please feel free to like subscribe if you want to see more on this project. Please subscribe. We love it uh, puts me in a good mood and doesn't cost you nothing. And if you want to go back and look at previous videos to see how we got to this point where we started, well, they're all in the playlist for this truck on our channel, and feel free to do that if you so desire. And as always, thanks for watching.